Welcome to the Deschutes Library Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Rivera, and today we're discussing the largest project resulting from the 2020 library bond, the Stevens Ranch Library, that will be built on the Stevens Road tract on the east edge of Bend. I'm joined today by Ruth Baleko, an architect with Miller Hull, the agency that has developed the design concept for the new library in collaboration with Steele and Associates. Her team is responsible for the remodeled designs of all the libraries in Deschutes County, and she's joining us today to talk about the new Stevens Ranch Library design. Ruth, the design is absolutely stunning. Can you tell us how it was influenced by Central Oregon? Absolutely. Well, Central Oregon, you know, has a really distinct, you know, high desert palette of geology, of plant life, of the beautiful sky, and and obviously, um, you know, mountain landscapes. That's what draws people here. And so, not only did that influence us in the the local stone that we're using at the base of the building, um, but the overall color palette. Um, we're using lots of regionally sourced timber in the building. But one of the things that really generated the form of the building you see is our awareness that this is an extraordinary landscape. The access to the views and the sky and the different mountains um, in the region is a lot of why people live here. It's what will make lovely library space to sit and look out at those spaces. However, it's also a, a tough climate. You have cold weather, you have hot weather, you have strong sunlight and we need to manage that. Otherwise, the library won't be comfortable inside. So we started with um, pretty in-depth solar analysis, starting you know very early in the morning to all the way into the evening and understood where sun would be penetrating the building at different times of the day, and then sculpted the outside of the building to protect the inside from the glare, from the heat gain, while still providing floor to ceiling windows out to those views. So um, we're trying to create the most comfortable, lovely space with connection to the outdoors that is still comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. I love the fact that uh, all that effort went into the design of the, you know, the sunlight coming through the windows and the heat gain. Um, because I've, I've seen some really impressive architecture from like the 1960s of houses that are designed for air to just flow through and just naturally pull through without any mechanical um, support. So I think that's really cool. Um, so you mentioned a lot of the cross laminated timber. I think that's right. Um, and the building also features quite a bit of steel cladding on the outside. So how do those materials work to keep that you know, energy efficiency in mind? Sure. Well, I'll start with the um, the metal cladding on the outside. Um, it's extremely durable. It's pre-finished, so it's not a material the library will have to maintain and repaint or restain over the life of the building. That's really important for the ongoing operating costs of the library system. It also allows us to use a perforated metal um, that works in that uh, the sh the sun shading that we talked about on that the upper floors of the building. So that's really important. Um, inside the building, we made the commitment to do an all timber structure. So what that means is you'll see wood columns, wood beams, and wood floor and roof structure. Um, that What that does for the library, number one, is it gives it that really warm kind of uh, high desert, warm wood feeling that I think makes for a, a comfortable setting. We've heard that from lots of users. It also means it's coming from regional sources, and it means that the embodied carbon in the construction of this building is is um, really drastically lowered and we know that's something that we need to be doing with all of our buildings today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, you've kind of already touched on the climate control side of things. Um, you know, I think uh, just the positioning of the building and where the windows are, the more you look at the design, the more it's, it's apparent that it's it's designed for the sun to come through at just the right time of day where it's not overpowering. Um, but one thing I wanted to touch on is is the view from the top floor in that reading area. You want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the parcel um, for the library is really lovely because it has long west and north views. And we, I think, having spent time on the site, having, um, you know, walked the site quite a few times and, you know, paced out where things are, where views are. We just felt like that northwest corner, um, you're gonna have views to Pilot Butte, out to the west over the neighborhoods. And uh, and it just feels like that's a spot in the building where um, we can create that kind of 
uh, more reflective, quiet environment to sit and, you know, enjoy the view, grab a few quiet moments and, you know, sink into a, a favorite book. I love it. Um, so the building is all electric um, and for a good reason. The goal is for it to be net zero electric. Uh, how are you planning to address that and reach that goal? Very exciting, I think, and, and really making um, that commitment here to the environment. Um, so all electric, so that means everything in the building will be powered by electricity only, uh, no fossil fuels or, or natural gas, et cetera. Um, and then um, in order to um, generate that electricity, we're using renewables, so photovoltaic solar panels um, on the roof of the building and um, in some, um, providing some covered parking. Um, and so what that allows us to do is really make sure that for the life of this library, um, we are making that commitment to lowering, um, you know, energy demand and, and the operating costs of this, this public entity. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, yeah, solar is so huge around here, especially with how much sun we get, yeah. especially in the summertime when yeah. you're trying to offset all of that air conditioning use and um, it's, a, it's a huge energy pull. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things that, you know, we do as a practice is um, before we just start adding PVs or solar panels to every surface, what we do first is reduce the load the building demands at the outset so that whatever solar panels we need to provide, um, it's we know it's the, um, what do I wanna say? It's already been made efficient. And so we look at how much energy the building is using to be heat, you know, to be heated, to be cooled. Um, what are the plug loads for computers and other equipment? Um, how are we managing daylight? Are we getting some natural light in so that the, the electric lights aren't turned on? So we really take a fine tooth comb to making sure the building is incredibly efficient first, and then we apply the solar panel um, to address that need. So I think we're coming at it from a lot of directions. That's really cool. Um, and this building is so massive. I mean, it's almost 100,000 square feet. And so that's just a lot of, and there's huge ceilings. So it's a lot of space to keep comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this building was built for the public, or is going to be built for the public with taxpayer dollars. And since 2014, we've tried to collect as much community feedback as possible. So we've collected feedback from over 6,000 residents through community outreach events. How has this feedback been integrated into the building design? Oh. I think residents are going to see it in so many places and it's, I think the team is so excited for this building to open in a few years and for people to come in and see their comments, you know, realized and, and fulfilled. Um, so a few of the ways that I think, you know, it's really going to um, show up in the building. Um, number one, we really heard from the community spaces to come and make things, to participate in activities, in programs, in speaker series, in DIY kind of hands-on events. And we've got rooms of all sizes on all floors of the building um, so that those activities can really be increased um, throughout the day and after hours if, if needed. Um, we also heard from the community that spaces for children, incredibly important, spaces for children to start to grow the pre-literacy skills, so when it, it is time to learn to read, um, we've built the curiosity, we've built the skills with them and their caregivers, that foundation is present. And so we've partnered with a firm out of Portland to create um, early childhood interactive environments um, that will be all throughout the youth floor, so from zero to teen. So I think that's gonna be just an incredible landscape of engagement, um, with each other, with knowledge, and and the caregivers and friends they come with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's that partnership with Plus and Greater Than is such a fantastic one. And the fact that you are behind, you have your hands in every single library around here so that those uh, the elements that are found in the children's area can also rotate from library to library. So it won't just be in the Stevens Ranch Library. Absolutely. You will see those, um, you'll see those items throughout the branches. Absolutely. So all of the branches, um, including downtown Ben, where we are today, will have their own dedicated custom installments um, from day one when they open that can rotate, but they will also be present when they open um, on day one. Excellent. My next question was going to be the children's area, so you already nailed that one. Um, so on top of that, 
the building will also have some incredible features uh, such as uh, study rooms, it'll have an outdoor vent plaza that integrates into the indoor vent plaza. The indoor vent plaza has spill out into the lobby for even larger events. Um, and it's got an automated book drop, it has the cafe. What's your favorite feature of the design? I mean, I think the arrivals area is gonna be most exciting because right from the minute you come in the front door, you're greeted with everything the library has to offer. Um, for all ages, all interests, all activities, whether it's the amazing collection that's being increased, um, the events happening in the public meeting room, the library of things, or just meeting a buddy at the cafe, I think it's gonna be a really dynamic space that showcases everything that Deschutes Public Library is trying to be for the community. And I think, you know, when you walk into different branches, you definitely see that there's people use the library in different ways. Um, and so what the library means to one person might mean something completely different. And mm -hmm. for instance, if you go from uh, just being uh, being single or, or just, you know, having your partner and then going to having kids, all of a sudden your relationship with the library changes and you discover a whole different um, range of programming and a whole different range of features that the library has to offer. So. There's always something there for everyone. Yeah. Um, that's all I have for you. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk a little bit more about the design. Um, I'm excited to inform our customers a little bit more about the library and provide it in, in more ways. Um, and I, I really think that this building is going to bring a lot of value to the Deschutes County residents. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you want to find this podcast, you can find it wherever podcasts are found. Uh, we will also be posting this to our YouTube page if you'd like a visual aid and you can see some of the design concepts that they have uh, that Miller Hole and Steel Associates have come out with so far. So thank you so much. Thanks.